The theme for this season is disseminating his presence. Taken from John chapter 15, verse 5b. Now to disseminate or disseminating means to broadcast. It means to make known. It means to spread. It means to publicize. It means to propagate. It can also stand for marketing. One thing I learned while staying in Eldoret is that people from this region are great marketers. They are great communicators. And they can sell you your own house. I'm telling you. <laughs> I saw it and that is a gift. Listen, not everybody can market. And that means if you can market the other things, you can also market Jesus Christ. Can I hear an amen? amen? You have been given that responsibility to share Christ. And that's what I believe the spirit behind the theme that we have, even as we celebrate the goodness of God. Now, one way that we can disseminate his presence is actually throwing a celebration. Buona sifiwe. Actually, it is the best way to disseminate because everybody loves a party. Listen, I love parties. I don't like funerals, but I love parties. How many of you love funerals? Let me just do a survey. Nobody in this place loves a... But how many of you love a wedding? Opening a house. A graduation of your child. I mean opening a new company office. Expanding somewhere. How many of us love those things? Amen. I see you, engineer. Temuet, good to see you. Buena si fio in Guyango. Wow. That is a true brother. He always visits me. I don't know what happened. But, but because of him, he has covered for you. Buena si fio. As you heard, I am soft. That's all. The other things, ah, uh, Missy Jui. Me, I'm soft. Buena si fio. That's the part I know. The other one that you know, please remove those glasses. Me, I just love joy. I love peace. I just love laughter. I want you to be happy. Especially that you're in the Lord. You must smile. Please smile. We want to gold medals. Uh, were you with me? Were you celebrating with me? Please, introduce me to that sister. I just want to congratulate her. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We have many opportunities for celebrations, such as birthdays, graduations, anniversaries, harvest times, coitos, weddings, baby showers, housewarming, inaugurations and kadhali kabwana sifiwe and as christians i have personally come to believe that the best opportunities we have for disseminating the presence of god is through celebrations i have come to believe that 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 is the best you see you can invite an unbeliever to a party and they will come Invite them for a crusade, they will not show up. Invite them for a harambe, they may not show up. But invite them for a party. I'm telling you, even those who are not invited will come. Isn't that true? Pasi, ama nadanganya. They will come. Let me tell you six reasons why we celebrate. Number one, we celebrate because it reminds us of the milestones in our lives or traditions in our culture. We celebrate to foster a mindset of gratitude. We celebrate because it builds a sense of community. You see, when you celebrate, you invite those people you know. 
And sometimes you want those people who, when they are there, they just bring laughter and they smile. And they are, you know, and they are like those Costarian. And they are like one, this, there's a sister here, I will not mention her name because I didn't ask for her permission. She likes to say Jibambe. What a to enjoy. Pasi, what a, you know, because you don't know. Ab- and when she says that, I just feel like, yes, I'm in the right company. What a to Jiba? Because tomorrow has its own issues and challenges. But if God has given you today, my brother, look for every opportunity to celebrate. Even kama umenunua kiatu mpya. Please take somebody out for chips. Tell them look at what the Lord has done. Because who who was born with shoes on their leg? Who knew they would have even legs? Some were even born with legs but they were involved in accidents and they don't have legs. But you are standing. My friend, why can't you celebrate? Yeah, you missed a place to to celebrate the goodness of God. So look for opportunities. Kama kuku ametega mayai, na melalia na meza, please celebrate. Because it's not all the chickens that do that. Some actually poke the eggs. And say, autapata. Yeah. If your cow has given birth, Call us. Hey. It's not easy for a cow to give birth. So if it succeed in giving a same deli, please call us. It is a miracle. If you recover from a flu these days, please call us. Because flus have killed people. Let us look for opportunities to do what? Ah. Am I the only one? I mean, if you went through COVID, you got COVID and you recovered, and it was only a flu. Hey, my friend, it is a miracle. Because people have died, we have buried them. So we need to foster, and we need to look for opportunities to celebrate. We celebrate to create memories and traditions, and we celebrate to reflect on future possibilities. I like what Pastor said. Mimi ntawacha hapa cathedral. And my friend, that is a reason to celebrate. Hata kama una imani, just see an a cathedral. I don't know what cathedral you are seeing. Please don't see the one of the Catholic in town. Please don't see the one of ACK. See an ultra-modern cathedral. With upstairs and downstairs. With a stage and offices. My goodness, are you dreaming with me? Are you seeing pastors coming from this side? Hiya. See the parking lot cab road. In fact, you should be saying, I think during that building project, God is going to bless me. I'm going to give 10 million to do the cab road. I want to participate. You know, begin dreaming. We celebrate to reflect future possibilities. And listen, me, I want God to use me to be a blessing. I don't want to be a curse. I don't want to be a beggar. It is good when people say Sitam Church is rich. Because if they said Sitam Church is poor, I would leave. Because it is a curse. So whenever they say you are rich, they are blessing us. And so if you came with Futsi Bisho, you can live with Mitsubishi. Hallelujah. You can begin dreaming big. You can visit somebody who has a house. When I joined Sitam, I had no house, I had no car. But I began seeing people with cars and I began dreaming of owning a car. I began dreaming of owning a house. I began dreaming of having a swimming pool. And Sitam members have a way of sparring one another into love and good deeds. If there is a reason for you to be here, it's because you can look across and say, I want to be like so and so. He has a company, I want to have a company. He has a house, I want to have a house. He's called professor, I want to be called professor. Come on. Are you with me? You aspire for future possibilities. And during this season, one way we want to disseminate his presence is through celebration. Now the Jason Ingram, 
the son of Pastor Chip Ingram, has written a song that many of us have come to love to sing during celebrations. And this song is called Goodness of God. It goes like this. I love you, Lord, for your mercies never fail me. All my days I have been held in your hand. From the moment I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And then he goes into the chorus and says, all my life, you, God, have been faithful. All my life, you have been so, so good with every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Then he goes on to stand statue and says, I love your voice. You have led me through the fire. In darkest night, you, have clo you are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. And I have lived in the goodness of God. And the Americans go, yeah. Come on, somebody. And then the chorus. And then there is a bridge. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Oh, Father, may you give somebody a vision that your goodness is running after them, that your goodness is chasing them, that your goodness is pursuing them. Oh, God, I want to be pursued by your goodness. Join me in praying that prayer. I want to be pursued by your goodness, oh God. By your favor, oh God. By your blessings, oh God. By your prosperity, oh God. By your signs and wonders. It's running after me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you what? Everything. Because your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Can we give God a hand clap? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I bring you a message celebrating the faithfulness of God as we seek to disseminate his presence. Would you turn with me in your Bible to Lamentation chapter 3 from verse 19 to 33? Lamentation chapter 3 from 19 to 33. Listen to what the Bible says from verse 19 to 33. Remember my affliction and my wandering, the wormwood and the gall. My soul continually remembers it and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who wait for him, to the soul who seeks him. It is good that one should wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he bears the yoke in his youth. Let him sit alone in silence when it is laid on him. Let him put his mouth in the dust. There may yet be hope. Let him give his cheek to the one who strikes and let him be filled with insult. For the Lord will not cast off forever, but though he causes grief, he will have compassion according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he does not afflict from his heart 
or grieve the children of men. Father, add blessing to your word. I want to go directly into the message. Why should we celebrate the faithfulness of God? Why should we celebrate the faithfulness of God? From this text, we should celebrate the faithfulness of God, number one, because God's faithfulness provides hope and encouragement. Let me repeat myself. God's faithfulness provides hope and encouragement. Let me give you context to this text because many of us find it hard to read the book of Lamentation. I don't know how many of you have ever gone through the book of Lamentation. If you are few, it is okay because for a long time, I would come to this book and it sounded to be so sad that I would just keep it. I didn't want sadness in my life. You know, some of us who are sanguines and who are happy-going, merry-making, when you come to a sad book, ah, uh -uh, you don't want to handle that pressure. Are you with me? Pressure, yeah, sadness, ah, uh -uh. believe me. What are you doing? Jiba? Jibambe. Jeremiah served the Lord during the final tragic days of Judah and Jerusalem. Every king during that time was worse than the one before and the godlessness of the age accelerated like a runaway trailer whose brakes had failed down a hill going towards a people who are despondent of the calamity or of the incident that is about to plague them. Despite Jeremiah's earnest preaching, the godlessness was so rampant. Nobody listened to him. He was persecuted. This is a prophet of God. He was abused and threatened even with death. He was beaten and thrown into a miry pit. Now the word miry means muddy. But if you know about Jerusalem, it's hard to come across a muddy pit. The true definition is implied that it was a pit latrine. Listen, I know you know about a pit latrine. I have a better experience than most of you about a pit latrine because I have fallen into one. As a young boy in the village, living in the village, I remember one time I went to relieve myself in the pit latrine and as I stood, the wood gave way and I found myself Sinking, deep, not in sin, <laughs> in pool, sinking to rise no more. Listen, when I was sinking, there was a root on the side, and I held on to the root, but I was still sinking. The smell did not matter. The warmth did not matter. Listen, when you're facing death, you don't smell poo poo. You don't see those things as they walk all over you. And I was sinking. And I was looking up through that hole. And it was so far. It was like there was no hope for me. But by the grace of God, somebody came to the same toilet to ease themselves. And I recognized that person. It was my older brother. And I called his name, Inzala. Now, Edward Inzala was my, is my brother's name, Pastor Edward. And Edward took off. <laughs> my friend, all my hope disappeared. The only hope I had 
her dick on off. I don't know what he had. I don't know what he thought. But after some few 10 minutes or so, I don't know how long I was there. Time did not matter. But I was going. And the grip on my hand, because I was holding so tightly, and you know, if you hold something so tightly, you actually tire so quickly. And I knew I was done for. I was there sobbing. When a rope was dropped, and I was told, bite the rope. The only thing that had not sunk was my, my face. It was up to here. I didn't care whether the rope had touched any poo-poo. All I cared for was my life. And I beat that rope. Because my hands had already gone in. And they began pulling me out. And soon I could hold the rope. When I got out of that hold, I fainted. I don't remember any other thing but just coming out. But let me tell you something about poo. When you're in poo, it is hot. <laughs> Listen, it is hell in there. It is not a joke. Do not desire for your enemy to fall in a petra train. In fact, if you are to pray a dangerous prayer for your enemy, pray that they fall in a... It is worse than an accident. Jeremiah was actually in a pit latrine in the courts of one of the guards. And the intention was that Jeremiah had to be killed. He was in a miry pit. And when the Babylonian laid siege to the city of Jerusalem, Jeremiah faced a prolonged nightmare of food and water deprivation. Thousands of people starving and disease rampant everywhere in Jerusalem. That is the kind of environment he was in. And as he watched, he witnessed the Babylonian breach the wall of the city, massacre the citizens, imprison the nobles, destroy, and he wondered at the promises of God true. And now there was no more Jerusalem. David's throne was toppled, and all hope seemed to have disappeared. Jeremiah was in true anguish, according to Lamentation, chapter 1, verse 12 to 22. To Jeremiah, God's judgment did not just fall on Jerusalem and Judah and everyone else. He personalized the destruction. He felt it. He says in Lamentation 3, verse 1 to 8, I am the man who has seen the affliction of the rod of the wrath, of his wrath. He has led me and made me walk in darkness and not in light. Surely he has turned his hand against me time and time through the day. God has aged my flesh and my skin and has broken my bones, he cried. He has besieged me and surrounded me with bitterness and woe. He has hedged me in so that I cannot get out. And he has made me, my chains, heavy. Even when I cry and shout, he shuts out my prayers. Jeremiah felt it. It didn't just happen to other people. Listen, church. When anything bad happens to you, as a member of my church, I, as your pastor, feel the pain. And Jeremiah felt the pain of God's people because he was God's servant. Your pastors feel with you. They may not feel it at your death, but they feel it with you. I used to say that I'm a Tiriki man and Tiriki men don't cry. These days, I go to funerals and I find tears just flowing. And I've come to realize that God can change you from a Tiriki man, from a Kalenjin man, from a Luo man, from, from a Kipskigis man, and transform your life till you have compassion with people. 
and you begin filling with them because God fills with us. And Jeremiah felt with them. The more he wrote in the book of Lamentation, the more agitated he got. He saw the world all around him crumble. However, one thought broke through his mind like a lightning bolt. There is one attribute of God that seemed to have been dropped on his mind by the Holy Spirit, I must confess. And he writes in Lamentation 3, verse 22 to 24. He says, this I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. And you ask yourself, what did Jeremiah recall to his mind? He continues and he says, through the Lord's mercies, we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. And that is what he recalled. Buona sifiwe. He recalled the compassion of God. He recalled the mercies of God. He recalled the steadfast and the faithfulness of God. And it gave him hope. Listen, even when we are going through tough time, we need to recall the mercies of God. We need to recall the goodness of God. We need to recall that God who has brought us here, even in this situation, he will take us out and take us to the next situation. Hallelujah. Please note, Jeremiah did what every believer must do. He, he must move from the point of listening to voices where you listen to voices that are speaking to you. And the devil is an expert. He will come to you and tell you, you're a failure. He will come and tell you, your marriage broke. You cannot amount to anything. Nobody will listen to you. He will come and tell you, your business went under. You will never get up. He will come and tell you many negative things. Look at what people are saying. You're seeing those people, they could be laughing at you. And Jeremiah is a lesson. He teaches us to stop listening to those voices. Hallelujah. He calls us not to listen to those voices, but to begin speaking to ourselves. He says, this I recall. It is good for you to talk to yourself. It is good for you to say to yourself, I will live and not die. Hallelujah. It is good for you to tell yourself, even though I am down, I will be up again. It is good for you to tell yourself, I may be 38, but I have hope I will get married. Hallelujah. It is good for you to say, I will not die poor. I will make it. This God has done it for others. He will do it for me. And begin leaving it. And begin brushing your shoes. And coming out of your house and telling your wife, I have a hundred shillings. I'm going to try and make it 200. And you go out there and you wash, put on an apron, you wash cars, and you come back with a thousand. Hallelujah. And you begin from somewhere. And you open a charcoal place. Oh, sorry, we are not allowed to burn charcoal. You go to a gas vent and you tell them, I want to vend your gas. And you begin making a hundred shillings out of every gas cylinder. And very soon you open a petrol station. And very soon you build your first flat. Hallelujah! But you have to speak it to yourself. You need to say, I'm not listening to those voices anymore. I'm going to begin speaking to myself. Hallelujah! I had a testimony from Eldoret. One of your members was giving a testimony and I was watching that clip and I remember this member saying something that touched me and caused me to think outside my box. He said, I am 70 years old. My mother is 90 years old. She grows, I hear, was it avocados? And I began doing research on avocados and I discovered my land has been lying idle for long. There was this old man speaking here. I don't know if you heard him. And I went and we decided, no, we are not going to sit anymore. Let's go and find out about avocado farming. And we discovered that we can have a partial income. 
that in three years you can begin earning millions. Ah! I am tired of being poor. I will not be poor. Please, permit me to speak to myself. I will not be poor. Ah! Poverty, I refuse you. I throw you out. You are not my friend. Wealth, I welcome you. From heaven, I am going to be a giver. God bless me. Oh, you can join me. You can speak to yourself. You can declare the promises of God in your life. I am tired of hearing negative voices from the devil and from people. People who are grumbling everywhere. The economy is bad. And then you have a pity party. Yeah, it is bad. Since the president, it is. Ah, listen. In the 80s, we thought it was bad. In the 90s, we thought it was bad. We thought we could not drive. But listen, in this season, when the fuel has gone up, we will drive better. Listen, in this season, when the economy, people are crying, it is bad, we will make money. Listen from this pastor. Because the next time I'm coming to Eldoret, I want to believe God. I have been praying about this. Surely, I didn't go to Kenya School of Flying and get a private pilot's license for nothing. I must have my own aeroplane. And they are not expensive. I have done my survey. With five million, I can get a second hand aircraft. Listen, not many of you have aircraft. I will be the first. Hallelujah. There is a God in heaven. When you think of the goodness of God and the mercies of God, it gives you hope. And that's why Jeremiah calls us to celebrate the goodness of God. Because the goodness of God, or the faithfulness of God, inspires hope and brings encouragement to our hearts. When you know where God has brought you from, when you know that God is merciful, when you know that God loves you, when you know that God is kind, you can hope again. Can I hear an amen? amen. You can trust him again. You can believe him again. You can lean on him. Amen. amen. Secondly, we should celebrate God's faithfulness because God's faithfulness is sure. God's faithfulness is sure. In the Old Testament scripture, we read these words from Numbers 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make good? In Psalms 119 verse 90, we read, Your faithfulness endures to all generations. You establish the earth and it abides. No wonder the prophet Jeremiah wrote, His compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. In fact, there is an interesting verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20 that says, for all the promises of God in him are yes and in him, amen, to the glory of God through. What does it say? Through who? Hey, when I read this verse, for the promises of God in him are yes. Ah, in him, amen. To whose glory? To the glory of God. Through who? I realize that God wants to display his faithfulness through us. God wants you and I to be the people who disseminate his presence. So that when you drive past, they say, we know that man. That man prays like no other business. No wonder God has blessed him. When they see your children, they say, ah, those are the children of that man who prays and believes God. That man who talks about God. When you pass somewhere, they say, if you invite that man and you hang around him, he will share you about his God and how his God blessed him. Listen, 
I want to be that man. Do you want to be that man who God displays his faithfulness through you? You know, I'm tired of talking about people. You know, I used to talk about people. You know, brother so-and-so, I know brother so-and-so, he's a big man in this company. I said, God, hey, a time is coming when others will talk about how good you are in my life and say, you know, Pastor Jay, God has lifted him up. We used to work with that man. But look at him these days. You got in a bodyguards. Listen, I know you, you despise preachers with bodyguards. But when you have so much money like that in your boot, you will need bodyguards. <laughs> hey, it is true. When God elevates you to that level, you'll become so busy that you will try and call me 40 and not find me. So please call me 40 now. When I'm at your level, because tomorrow, it's not that I will despise you. It's just that God would want me to glorify him, even in high offices, and I may not have time for you. And you will think I am snobbish. No, 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 no. It will be God displaying his faithfulness through who? Come on, somebody. Father, would you display your faithfulness through me? I want you to make that your prayer. Father, display your faithfulness through me. Lord, may Sitam Eldoret be the church through which you display your faithfulness through them. Oh God, remember somebody who has been trusting you for a breakthrough. Display your faithfulness through them to the glory and honor of your name that they will declare that the Lord is faithful. Lord, we look to you. We are tired of where we are. We have minimized you. We have limited you. We have not known you. Your word says the people that know their God will be strong and they will do exploits. Father, we don't know you. That's why we've not done exploits. We want to know you, oh God. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I see my time is finished, but I cannot push any further. But I don't need to finish this sermon because God has given you what you need. With every head bowed and every eye closed, you may be here. You may be saying, I want God to display his faithfulness through me. I want God to elevate me. But pastor, I am not faithful. I haven't been faithful. Sin has dominion over my life. I cannot have confidence to ask God for anything. I am backslidden. I need him to save me again. I need him to restore me again. Pastor, would you pray for me? I want my relationship restored. If you're here and you're such a one, would you shoot up that hand? We'll see it. We will ask you to put it down and we will pray for you. Is there anybody like that? You're saying, pray for me. I see that hand, my sister and my sister and back there. I see those hands. Anybody else, you're saying, pray for me, I'm living in sin. I see that hand, my brother. I see my, that hand, my sister back there and back there and back there and here in the middle. I see that hand. I see that hand. God bless you. If you're saying, pray for me, pray for me, I need my relationship with God restored. I see that hand to my right. Put it down. I see that right hand right there, back there. God bless you. There are several of us who've raised their hands. Do me a favor. Just get up on your feet where you are as we pray, as I lead you in prayer right now. You're saying, I need Jesus to restore me. I have sinned against him. I need this salvation also. Stand right now in the name of Jesus as we make this prayer. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet, my brother. Stand on your feet, my sister. Stand, stand. It is to God that we are turning, not to a man. Men will fail us, but God will not abandon us. Would you repeat after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I have failed you in many areas. I have not trusted you. I have failed you. I would have known better, but I failed you. 
and sin had ha has had dominion over my life, would you forgive me? Would you cleanse me? Would you purify me? Would you write my name in the book of life? I return to you. You say if we confess our sins, you are faithful. You are just. You will forgive. You will cleanse. You will purify me from every unrighteousness. Purify me right now. I want to be pure before you. I too want to be faithful. Oh God, make me faithful. I want to be blessed by you. I want your hand over my life. I am tired of where I am. I want higher ground. I look to you. I believe in you. Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen.